Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now, in this video, we're going to start solving what are called trigonometric equations. Now, we've all seen solving equations before uh, in pre-calculus or in algebra. If we have equation, let's say we have some equation uh, 2x minus 5 is equal to 3. If you're given this equation in another course and you're asked to solve for x, well, what that means is we're trying to find all values of x such that when you plug in those values for x in this equation, this equation is true, that 2 times that value of x minus 5 is actually equal to 3. So we do this by isolating x. We say, well, this is the same as 2x equals 8 by adding 5 to both sides, so x is equal to 4. So here we have a single solution, x is equal to 4. 4 is the only value of x that if we plug in to our original equation, we're going to get 2 times that value of x minus 5 equals 3. In this case, 8 minus 5 equals 3. We see it does work here. And so this is the solution. We only have one, and when we have more than one solution, we call that the set of all solutions. So here we still have a set of all solutions but that set of all solutions only contains one solution. It's the solution x equals 4. Now we're going to be doing something similar with solving these trigonometric equations, the difference being that we have these trig functions in them. So we need to be very familiar with our identities so we know how to manipulate these properly. And the other major difference is that the periodicity of these trig functions comes into play in a very major way. And, and let's see what I mean here with an example. Let's say we're asked to solve sine of theta equals the square root of 3 over 2. Now if I draw out a unit circle, let's say we want to find the set of solutions such that this equation is true. Well, I know that sine of theta equals the square root of 3 over 2 at pi over 3. I also know that it equals the square root of 3 over 2 at 2 pi over 3. So let's call this pi over 3. And this larger angle here, this is 2 pi over 3. So these are some solutions for the equation sine of theta equals root 3 over 2. So we could say the solution for one period, or the solutions for one period, are pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. right? And these are all the solutions I have for one period. And here, whenever I say one period, I'm going to mean between 0 and 2 pi, including both 0 and 2 pi. Really, we only need to include one of them. It's up to you which one you want to include. Uh, we'll end up combining them anyway. Um, so here in one period, sine of theta equals root 3 over 2 only in these two places pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. It's negative everywhere in quadrants 3 or 4, so we don't have to worry about those. These are our solutions for one period. We also sometimes call these particular solutions. Right here, pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3 are particular solutions because they are solutions. They're not all of the solutions, but they're exactly these specific solutions. Uh, the best word to use for it is what we do use for it. They're particular solutions. Now, our goal for all of these problems is going to be to find the general solutions. Now what a general solution is, a general solution is a way of us expressing all possible values of theta for which sine of theta equals root 3 over 2. So notice that pi over 3 is one of our particular solutions. Because pi over 3 is a solution, I also have pi over 3 plus 2 pi is a solution. In other words, if I go an additional full rotation around the circle of 2 pi, I get an angle that's coterminal with pi over 3. So plugging this angle, pi over 3 plus 2 pi, into sine, I'm still going to get the square root of 3 over 2. I also have pi over 3 minus 2 pi as a solution. That's going uh, a rotation in the negative direction and finding another angle that's coterminal with pi over 3, or pi over 3 plus 4 pi. 
etc., etc., and there are infinitely many of these. I can keep adding 2 pi over and over and over again to pi over 3, and I'll keep getting more and more and more solutions. So how do we show this in a general solution? Well, we're working with theta here, not x. So I'm going to say theta is equal to pi over 3 plus 2k pi. We could say 2 pi k, but I like to put my pi at the end. Plus 2k pi, where k is any integer. Remember, we write that this way. k is in the integers. So that means if I plug in any integer for k, I'm going to get a solution, aren't I? If I plug in 0, I just get pi over 3, our particular solution for one period. If I plug in positive 1, I'll have this first extra solution we found. If k is negative 1, I have the second solution. If k is positive 2, I have this third solution, and so on and so on. Now, because k is any integer, this is going to give me all possible angles that are coterminal with pi over 3. So that's going to give me all possible solutions associated with the particular solution pi over 3. Now, we had another particular solution here. We had 2 pi over 3. So we can do the same thing. I'm going to say theta equals 2 pi over 3. And again, any angle that's coterminal with 2 pi over 3, if I evaluate sine at that angle, I'm going to get sine of that angle is equal to root 3 over 2. So I can do this again. This is 2 pi over 3 plus 2k pi, where k is any integer. This k, an element of the integers, that means that we can choose any k. This is our only requirement for k, is that it's in the set of all integers. So any integer in this set is a valid candidate for k, and that candidate is going to give us a particular solution when we plug it in here. Now this here, these two solutions, are the general solution for this problem. Sine of theta equals the square root of theta over 2. Not only are all of these solutions, but every possible solution to the problem is included in this set of solutions. There are no other solutions other than what we've written here, and we've written all of them. So this is a very elegant way to write these solutions, and, and realize here that we haven't just come up with two solutions, we've come up with infinitely many solutions to this problem. And even though there's infinitely many of them, we've been able to track every single one of them. We've been able to write down specifically every single one of those infinitely many solutions. It's kind of hard to wrap your mind around a little bit, isn't it? Okay, so let's take a look at another example, get a little more used to this. And for the next, um, you know, probably four or five more videos, we're just going to be doing a lot of these different examples. We want to try to incorporate some of our trig identities into these as well and see how we can use those to solve these problems. But this is where the periodicity comes into play. Uh, really, the MO to try to solve these problems is we're going to solve the solutions for one period. After we have all of the solutions that exist in the period 0 to 2 pi, we can add the periodicity of that function multiplied by k to each of those particular solutions and we'll get the set of all solutions. Now here sine, I say the period of the function because the period of sine is 2, two pi. So if I have pi over 3 here, I go 2 pi again and I get the same solution at the new angle. But we'll see in a second when we're dealing with tangent or cotangent or something that uh, really those two functions that have periods of just pi, we're going to switch this up to just k pi. Right? If it has a period of pi, that means uh, that pi over 3 plus pi is going to be another solution uh, if pi over 3 was one of my solutions. But let's go ahead and dive in. Let's see another example. Let's say we want to solve cosine of theta is negative root 3 over 2. And here we're going to do something a little bit different. The problem is asking us to list six specific solutions. So we're going to find our general solution, and then we're going to plug in six values of k to get some specific solutions. Now, we won't need the unit circle for all of these, and we don't really need it here, but just so we can visualize what's going on. If I have my unit circle here, I know that cosine of root 3 over 2 or sorry, cosine of theta equals negative root 3 over 2 over here at 5 pi over 6 and also at 7 pi over 6, doesn't it? So this smaller angle is 5 pi over 6 and this larger angle is 7 pi over 6. Okay, these are my two particular solutions or solutions of one period. I know that cosine doesn't equal negative root 3 over 2 in quadrants 1 and 4, 
because cosine's positive and quadrant's one and four. And the only two places it's going to equal the square root of three over two in between zero and two pi in total are the two angles that we just wrote out here. Theta equals five pi over six and theta equals seven pi over six. Now just like in the last problem, once we have these particular solutions, oh, seven pi over six, where's that three coming from? As soon as we have these particular solutions, we can say, well, if five pi over six is a solution for theta, then five pi over six plus two k pi must also be a solution because cosine has a periodicity of two pi. If seven pi over six is a solution, then seven pi over six plus two k pi is also a solution and both of these are for all values of k that are in the integers. That's just double barred z, that's how we denote that. So here's the first part of the problem, solve cosine of negative root three over two. So now we need to list six specific solutions. Now let's go ahead and take a couple from each of these. Uh, for my first general solution, I have five pi over six. I can add two pi to that. In other words, I can add 12 pi over six to that and I get 17 pi over six. I can subtract 12 pi over six from this and I'll get a negative seven pi over six. And now let's take a look over here. Let's pull some of these over here. Uh, really in this problem, we could list six solutions all from this first general solution that would still be six specific solutions, but just to mix it up a little bit, we found our first particular solution is seven pi over six. Adding two pi or 12 pi over six to this, I get 19 pi over six. And I can also subtract 12 pi over six from our original particular solution. And I'm going to get a negative five pi over six. So we're done. We've listed six solutions. Now, as I said before, in the next several videos, we're going to do lots of examples of these. And as always, I advise you whenever I put an example up on the board, go ahead and pause that video, work out the example for yourself, and then when you watch me do it, you can kind of check your answer, see if you did it the right way, see if you did it correctly, but maybe a different way than me, or see if you did it, um, maybe you had a small mistake somewhere, that way you can learn from that mistake instead of just, you know, those eyes glazing over as you just watch me do problem after problem. All right, well, we'll see you in that next video.